In 2020, Major League Baseball inhibited a universal DH rule, allowing both American League and National League teams to have a designated hitter in their lineups. In a standard season, it's just the American League that has the designated hitter. So the question, is a universal DH rule fair? Is it fair? Does it give National League teams an unfair advantage if we have a universal DH? Major League Baseball announced in the 2020 offseason that Marcel Ozuna had been voted to be the winner of the Edgar Martinez Outstanding Designated Hitter Award. He was the very first ever National League recipient of the award. Why? Well, because Major League Baseball had never had a designated hitter, a universal DH, for both leagues. Uh, It was the first time the National League teams had ever been able to use a designated hitter in their lineups. Normally, you would have the pitcher that would have to bat, and most times the pitcher would either be all the way at the bottom of the lineup in the 9 spot or the 8 spot in the lineup, as some teams have tried to strategically place pitchers into the 8 spot to bat. Uh, setting up the top of their lineup. Regardless, Marcel Ozuna in 2020 was the very first National League player to win the designated hitter award. He led the entire league in home runs, total bases, and RBIs in 2020 in 60 games, posting a 338 batting average, a 431 on base, and a 636 slugging percentage. That's unreal numbers. He is now a free agent this offseason, but Marcel Ozuna winning the designated hitter award in 2020, the first year that the designated hitter was universal, the first year National League teams were given the option to have a designated hitter in their lineup, and guess what? A National League hitter wins the award. So it kind of begs the question, and I've been thinking it, Does a universal DH rule give National League teams an advantage? National League teams have just a a history of being more deep than AL teams. Others might disagree with me on that. But if you think about it, National League teams and and their management, their coaching, their general managers, you know, the owners of those teams, they come in with the expectation that they are going to need to have at least one or two guys or a more quote-unquote deep team, you know, for those late-game scenarios where a, a, you know, a a relief pitcher is coming in or, you know, a Wade Davis is coming in and all of a sudden he has to come up and swing the bat. You know, Wade Davis spent some time with the Colorado Rockies. I would imagine, you know, the Rockies probably had a guy to come in. If if Wade Davis came in, pitched, got three outs, you know, they'd probably have somebody, if, if, if Davis was due up you know, the next half inning, they probably have somebody on the bench ready to go. So Davis doesn't have to swing the bat. Pitchers aren't, you know, designed to swing the bat. Most of them aren't. Well, and then there's Madison Bumgarner, but he's, uh, you know, he, he's a unicorn, really. <laughs> he's, he's his own unicorn. There's Bumgarner. So, uh, you know, despite Bumgarner, most pitchers can't bat. Uh, most pitchers are designed to pitch. In 2020, with the designated hitter in the NL, uh, Major League Baseball, the TV ratings went up in 2020. Maybe some of that is the shortened season, you know, not as many games, people really coming off of that, you know, that 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 long stretch where we didn't have any baseball. We were in the middle of the of the pandemic, the global health crisis. We were all crying out for baseball and baseball just was not there. Other people think that the TV ratings went up because the games were more entertaining. There was more offense. There were more base runners. There were more RBIs. Uh, It seemed like there was more runs going up on the board in 2020. Well, there was a universal DH. Uh, For some teams, it it really helped it really panned out really well. And for other teams that, that just didn't have the depth for that DH role in the National League, it didn't go so well for them. I'll say that. So to end this video, guys, uh, there's two topics that I want to talk about. Does the MLB continue with the universal DH in 2021? And also my verdict of, do I think that MLB needs a universal DH? Do we need one? Uh, you know, what are the pros and cons? So here we go. My verdict, 
I don't think that MLB baseball needs a universal DH. Is it great that the ratings went up in 2020 when we had a DH? Yes. Did I completely understand why Major League Baseball and Rob Manfred decided to go ahead and and, and move through with the rule of the universal DH in 2020? Absolutely. It was a 60-game season. They wanted to test the waters. You know, TV ratings did go up. It seemed like there was, you know, some incentive to keep it going. Have no news on whether or not in the 2021 MLB season, if it will, if it will continue, if the universal DH can will and can continue. Uh, you know, most of the reports, which there aren't many, but the reports that we do have indicate that the universal DH will, will die. It will not continue. There's there's no intention from Rod Manfred. There's been you know no official statement coming out from Major League Baseball that the universal DH is going to be. Uh, continued into the 2021 season and, and my verdict on you know on it and, and you know the pros and the cons you know pros are yeah there's more offense there is there's more run scoring there's more offense maybe tv ratings are going up because of that you know it, it's it's more um you know more offense involved the pitchers don't have to bat it, it's probably better for you know, the the health and safety of pitchers, too, if they don't have to go up there to bat. But also a big con for me and why I don't think the MLB really needs a universal DH is 2020 was a unique season. I understand why they, you know, implemented the rule in 2020. It was a good it was a good trial run. It was a good trial run for this. And um, I, I don't think that it needs to continue, uh, you know, We've always known baseball in the American League to have the DH and the National League to, to not have the DH. And a, you know, a big con for me with the universal DH is it takes out the strategy of the game. You know, if everybody can stay healthy and you have, you have a designated hitter and you have somebody on your roster meant to, to fill that role, you don't really have any need or any incentive to add any more players. And so, you know, it kind of eliminates, it really the biggest con for me is it eliminates that strategy of, of having to have substitutions or double switches or, you know, a lot of that goes out the window with the universal DH. I'm an old school guy, so hey, I'm biased. I'm an old school guy. I like to see pitchers, you know, who can actually bat. I, I'm a fan of Madison Bumgarner. I follow the Kansas City Royals. I follow the Arizona Diamondbacks very closely. They're my two favorite teams in Major League Baseball. And, you know, in the Arizona Diamondbacks case, they, they have a pitcher, Madison Bumgarner, who can swing the bat. I think it's very entertaining to see Madison Bumgarner go up there and, and hit a jack and hit a home run. It's, it's, it's crazy what uh, some pitchers can actually do with the bat. I understand the implementation of the rule, but, but I don't think that it, it needs to continue. Uh, and all indications point towards that, that 2020 was a unique year and... and Major League Baseball won't be moving forward with the Universal DH in 2021. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Universal DH. Should MLB Baseball implement it into 2021? Should it, should it always be a thing? Yes or no? Tell me why. You know, tell me why you th you're one way or the other. Tell me why yes. Tell me why no. And that's, that's it for this video. Taper time out. So I'm actually updating this video, guys, as I'm live editing it now, and I'll have it up here uh, very shortly for you all. Um, I'm actually not going to be live streaming tonight. We'll go ahead and push that over to tomorrow. So go ahead, give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram. That's where I'll be updating you guys on when I decide to go live. I believe we'll probably go live on Twitch tomorrow about noon. I'm thinking around noon, so... Uh, uh, go ahead and go over there, follow me, and uh, again, I'll update you guys on the Twitter, Instagram uh, before I go live at noon tomorrow. See you then.